Hey guys, Chris again from ClassicVWBugs.com and in this video I want to talk to you about the 1970 Beetle. 50 years old. I'm going to discuss with you the changes and what they did in 1970 and on a sad note, I'm actually kissing this little baby goodbye. This car has sold. I love this car and it's going to a great place in California and uh, I figured I got to get this video in before it leaves so I don't know when I'm going to get another 70 in the shop so let's get to it. All right, so here we are, the 1970 VW Beetle, 50 years old. Oh, my gosh. To some people out there, even to me, it's amazing to think that the 1970 Beetle is 50 years old. Uh, I was not born yet, but I'm sure there's plenty of people out there today that are saying to themselves, holy cow, the 70 Beetle is 50 years old. I just, It's just hearing 70s, I guess, that's approaching 50. Uh, just uh, pretty pretty amazing um so here we are 1970 beetle i love 1970 guys uh it's a really truly to my eyes a classic beetle it's kind of has some one year only features uh i love the uh the look the lines of it i think it's got a it's very well balanced car and it you can feel when you drive this car it's they ironed out a lot of the kinks and a lot of the rough edges so to speak uh from the previous beetles uh, so I, I really do like 1970 Beetle pretty much where I end, I guess, when it comes as, as, in this day and age, uh, where I end with the, my collectability. Uh, it used to be 67 and earlier, but now I've creeped up to 1970. And as, of course, as time goes on, I'll probably look into getting, you know, some of the later Beetles. But let's go talk about the changes and what happened in 1970. So I'm going to have a link in the description below this video. And I'll have a link there in uh, regards to beetle changes through the years. And it's a very, you know, short, concise outline of what changes happen per year. Uh, so definitely check out that link below the video. And that'll give you, that'll be a great reference. And I'm going to reference off of that as well. Uh, so 70 Beetle. Okay, so I painted this car spicy orange metallic. It's actually a mini BMW color. And I did like Clementine Orange that was offered in 70 and 71. Uh, those, were, those were just two years. Those two years that offered Clementine Orange. So I really liked Clementine Orange. So this spicy orange metallic is basically Clementine Orange, but with metallic thrown into it. I do have the code if anybody is interested. Uh, but just a beautiful uh, color I put on this thing. And it was it's striking with the black and, and such. So in 70, they already had the straight bumpers. 68 started the straight bumpers and got rid of those overrider bumpers that we're all known to uh, see on the classic uh, 67 and earlier Beatles. But the big thing that happened, one of the big things that happened in 70, of the bigger turn signals on the tops of the fenders. Before this, 69 and down, they were much smaller, more of a, I don't know, they call them peanuts. The peanuts were even thinner, like 63 and earlier, uh, but they were much smaller than this. And then... Um, do remember, uh, do, do take note, 70 is the last year for the standard convertible. So the standard convertible Beetle, not Super Beetle. Super Beetles did not come until 1971. And the Super Beetle would have had the bigger nose. Okay, so the trunk lid would have been a lot fatter. Okay, you would have had the McPherson strut front end. And uh, yeah, uh, so from 71 and on... Uh, was only Super Beetle when it came to a convertible. So 70 is the last year for the standard convertible. As we come around the side here, I'm going to open the door. Now, I did modify this car or customize it uh, to my liking, and um, I did take out the original uh, seats. Original seats would have had the high headrest, but if you look at 68 and 69 high headrest seats, much fatter headrest on the 68 and 69 seats since 70 was the one year seat okay where it had the thinner headrest 71 had the same looking seat but it was different on the seat tracks on the bottom the way it locked in uh, but 70 had the thinner uh, headrest uh, up here which i do like more than 68 69 for some reason that 68 69 seat just looks very fat to me it just looks kind of odd uh, but um 70 would have had the thinner uh, headrest. And in 1970, you would have had the louvered deck lid finally. 6869 still had the smooth deck lid on a sedan, not a convertible. Uh, would have still had a smooth 
uh, deck lid back, back here without louvers. But in uh, 70, they came up with the 1600 single port motor. So you would have had uh, two sections for louvers on the rear deck lid. Uh, convertibles would have had this setup. Uh, but yeah, um, starting of the cooling. So uh, let's open the deck lid here. And you can see this is the 1600 single port motor. I think this is a great motor. I love the 1600 single port engine. And uh, it's still simple, still easy to work on. It's got great power. And um, you can upgrade it pretty easily as well. One year only US bound 1600 single port was the, uh, what happened here in 1970. So you also would have had the great 30 pick three carb which is a great carburetor. It's very uh, tolerant to, you know, different distributors. If you wanted to change, I get rid of my vacuum advance and I put the 009 on and it works really well with the uh, 30 pick three carb. Later on in 71, they went to the 34 carb. And when you put an 009 to that, there's a, a notorious flat spot uh, that happens. So um, I like to keep the simple and clean look in my engine compartment. And uh, really, really great motor. I love the 1600 single port motor. I might even love it more than a dual port motor. Uh, it just still keeps an older look, easier to work on, easier to get your hands in and down on the sides here to work on your uh, spark plugs if you have to. So, and uh, 1600 single ports would have started with a B. If I get down here, and you see the stamping on the engine case there, right below the generator stand, starts with a B. Before this would have started with an H, 1300 would have started with an F. So uh, 1600 single port motor, great, great motor. Now also to note, in these years, starting in 69, they would have had the IRS uh, transmission uh, axles in the back, uh, much easier to work on than the swing axle. And also what was very nice in 1970 was that the, uh, the gearing was much better in the transmission, uh, finer teeth, and so it was a lot quieter. Uh, so when you run a 70, you, you will hear a much less noise in the back uh, coming behind that luggage compartment. Oh, and one major feature that happened in 1970 is breathtaking. The buzzer. The door buzzer to tell you that the door is still opened. Amazing. It's amazing that the buzzer, even in this car, is still working. Uh, a lot of these buzzers just go bad over the years. But uh, pretty amazing uh, that 1970 they started the door buzzer. Let's take a listen. Ugh. So that's about it, guys. The 1970 Beetle. Very few changes. I just went over the most obvious changes that happened in 70. If I did miss anything, please leave them in the comments section below. And also, please be sure to like, subscribe, hit that notification bell, and uh, keep this content going. And uh, if you can, for the price of a cup of coffee, you can leave a PayPal donation, a small donation. It's in the link in the description below this video. And throw a couple bucks to us. Keeps this content going and uh, keeps you guys informed on the vintage vw scene and uh yeah guys if i missed anything here uh, please let me know uh there was very few changes from 68 69 into 70 uh, but i went over the most obvious and uh i'm sure i might have forgotten something so uh, that's what's great about this community we keep it in open form uh but so sad to see this go guys this was my my wedding car i uh, i had a volkswagen uh, uh beetle themed wedding and uh, this car was our car, and uh, it's going to be really tough to see it go. But um, you know, it, it's it's that's the curse of one of the curses of my business, <laughs> so to speak. It's uh, uh, some of the cars that I I restore for myself. I truly love. I truly adore, and uh, I become attached to them. And then uh, somebody comes along and you know wants to make me an offer, and uh, something. Most of the time, it's an offer that I can't refuse. Um, so you got to move on, and. Uh, and that's it. I think Wayne Carini said it. If uh, if I kept them all, I'd be out of business. So, all right, guys. Chris from ClassicVWBugs.com. i uh, love to hear your thoughts on this. And I will see you next time. Here goes my 1970 Beetle. Oh, my God. Off to California. At least a nicer climate. One last look. There she goes. There's the 
shipping truck. And guys, we used a company called Angels Moving Autos. And uh, she's a great broker. Her name is Dina. I've known about her for at least a good 10 years. She's a great broker and she finds the great shippers.